Good morning, Civil Engineering and Architecture, and welcome to part two. In the last part, we ended up over here in our elevations, and we just put in our walls. Now we're going to go ahead and add a floor. So first things first, head over to your floor level on the floor plans, and we have our four walls in place, and hover over to the floors option located right over here, select that, and floors works in many ways, but for a project that's simple like this, the best way to put a floor is simply by clicking on the four walls. And when you do so, you're going to create or fabricate a floor. Now you'll notice right away that if I zoom in on this, there's a purple line on the exterior of the walls, on the very most exterior. But for whatever reason, if I wanted it to be on the interior, all I need to do is select these double arrows over here and it will move all the walls to the interior. Revit understands that. However, this floor is going to kind of be also like my foundation, so I'm going to keep it on the exterior. And once that's in play, we're going to change the type of floor from a generic 12 inch to, let's say, a wood joist 10 inch wood finish floor. So if you remember from the one of the requirements, we have to have a wood shed. So we're going to switch this. And when we did that, it's automatically going to change our floor to one of a wood joist system. And go ahead and click on the green arrow over here. If for whatever reason you do not have a green arrow over here, use this little carrot top tool and click on it until a green arrow shows up. For some reason, Revit has a lot of options and a lot of different interfaces, so sometimes the right one doesn't show up. But if you click on that, it's going to go ahead and create a floor for you, and you can easily tell that those are those wood being or wood wood rafters, wood planks, space 10 inches or wood joists. <laughs> space 10 inches and if you take a look at your 3D view by clicking on default 3D elevation you're going to notice your house now and it has a floor or your shed and it has a floor and it looks awesome. So with our floors done let's go ahead and add a roof now to our to our shed head over to the floor plan of the roof located over here and the reason we headed to roofs because we're building a roof and if you build it on the floor level it's going to kind of be like crushing in your walls and we don't want that to happen. Go over to the roof option, select that and you have to make sure a few things. One, defining slopes is checked because we're making a, a gable roof and two, the overhang. So the overhang is the portion of the roof that hangs off the walls. For something like a shed, it's typically one foot. So I'm going to add a one foot overhang. And then I'm going to put down two walls, one over here and one over here. Now if I put a wall over here, or a roof over here and a roof part over here, I'm going to create a hipster roof. A roof that goes all all the angles are heading towards the center. However, the project said I had to create a gable roof. So in order to make sure these sides are flat or go vertically upward, instead of move towards the center, I'm going to turn off defined slope. And when you turn this off and then select the other two sides, that side and that side, and click on the green check mark. Uh, would you like to attach the walls to the roof? Uh, I think you do want to attach the walls to the roof. It seems like a healthy option. So I'm going to click yes. And bada boom. Let's go check the roof. And there we go. We got a roof, a gable roof to our shed. So these are the two sides that we did not turn on defining slopes to. Or we unchecked it. And that's why they're going vertically up while the other sides go inward. 
That's one of many ways to make roofs, and later on we'll talk about more complex ways to make more elaborate roof systems. Now, something I forgot to do when I put this roof together was I forgot to detail the roof a little bit better. So basic roof doesn't really give me a whole lot of description about what this roof is or what materials it's made of. However, if you select it, let's switch it over to a wood rafter 8 inch asphalt shingle system. Asphalt shingle, I think I said that. And click on that and it's going to transform your roof if you had it selected into that system. So now we have an asphalt roof and we have our wood joist floors and this shed is looking pretty awesome. If for whatever reason you didn't like your roof like this, you can always adjust the pitch of the roof by grabbing the top of it or grabbing the arrows and adjusting it. Uh, but you can't cave it inward apparently, which is awesome. Now, we still don't have these materials in for our wall. We don't have the clapboard, the sheathing, the studs, or the gypsum, and it's a requirement to have all those things. So let's go ahead and add it to our walls. Head over to your floor plan, because we can visibly see the walls in the floor plan. You can go ahead and select one of them, and then head over to where it says basic wall. Um, I don't see, oh, actually head over to edit type. So click on that and we're going to duplicate this wall. We're going to create a duplicate of this wall and we're going to rename it shed wall because it's going to be the wall of our shed. I'm going to click OK. And now that we've created a new wall, we can do whatever we want to this wall and it will be represented correctly in this shed. So let's go ahead and edit the structure of this wall. So where it says structure, click on edit. And right now this wall has eight inches of structure one. I have no idea what structure one is and I know it's not really anything. So let's go ahead and change that up a bit. Oh, structure one is just, oh, I see what they did. Oh, that's cool. Uh, let's change the layers. So I'm going to click on the layers above, dot, 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 and it's going to open up an option like this. So if you didn't see how I did that, I just clicked over here, clicked on the dot, 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 and it opened up these options. And I can already tell there's been some changes from last year because this looks different. But that's fine. It should still work the same. Uh, we're going to need clapboard. So let's see if we have clapboard. We do not have clapboard. Let me type in clap. Okay, let me see what we do have. Okay, we have we have our gypsum, so I'm going to click on gypsum. I'm going to insert a new layer, so over here it says insert. Click on that, another structure is going to appear on that blank one. Click on the dot dot dot. I wonder if we have studs, S-T-U-D. Okay, we got metal studs. Maybe it's going under a different name. Let's try siding. No, nothing for siding. Maybe switch project materials from all to wood. I'm going to delete the word siding. Let's see what we have. So we have joists. We have, oh, we have sheathing. Okay, so select sheathing. Plywood sheathing. I'm going to insert a new layer. I'm going to switch the material types to wood again. So, kind of a problem. We don't have studs or our clapboard layer, which I don't know why they take away things from Auto Revit, but let's go ahead and see if we can bypass that. Uh, over here, it looks like there's now an option to add things. So let's click on that. Go to Create New Material. And 
did it create a new material? Okay, so this is our new material. Let's call this a stud layer made of wood. Description, wood for walls, studs, class, let's see, let's identify it as wood. And then the rest of this we should be able to leave blank. I'm going to click apply. And let's see if it shows up here. Up oh, here it is. So I switch back to all and here's our stud layer wood. So I'm going to double click on that. And let's insert one last layer. This is going to be our clapboard. And since clapboard doesn't exist, we're going to have to add a new layer. So create new material. Clapboard. Interior clapboard for walls. It's going to help protect our walls from the elements. Class, let's change it to wood. And oh, clapboard. Nah, everyone knows clapboard's wood. And I'm going to go ahead, click apply, double click on clapboard, and now we have clapboard as well. So, if you've noticed, over here it says interior side, and over here it says exterior side. This is what's inside the house, this is what's outside the house. So on our outmost layer, we have our finish. So I'm going to change this from structure one to finish. And I'm going to move that up. So in order to do that over here, with that one selected, click up. And you're going to move the clapboard to the outside of the house. Now on our inside, we have our studs, as well as the, the uh, plywood sheathing. And closest to the inside, the inside wall that we're facing, we have the gypsum wallboard. So I'm going to select the gypsum and I'm going to move that one down. Now right now these all have zero inch thicknesses. Let's or accept the gypsum. Let's go ahead and add the, or adjust them correctly. So clapboard is going to be a half inch. The studs are going to be 3 4 inch. Plywood sheathing is going to be 3 and 1 half inch. And the gypsum wallboard is going to be 3 4 inch. And I don't know all these numbers off the top of my head. I'm actually looking them up right now. So later on we're going to talk about codes. And whenever you design a building, you're going to have to make sure that they follow the codes of that area. And if they don't follow the codes, then you have to make them follow the codes. Legally, not illegally. Anyway, so that's our layer. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out in the long run because we're going to lose some detail in 2015, which is kind of sad. But let's go ahead and click OK. And click OK one more time. And right now, if I click on this wall, it's a basic wall, but if I click on the wall I had selected previously, you're going to notice it's been changed to that shed wall that we created. So go ahead and select all three other walls, and you can do this also by holding down the control key on the keyboard, and let's change the properties of it to that shed wall. So I'm going to go and look for shed wall. Here it is, and I'm going to click on that, and now they've all been transformed into that shed wall. So that concludes the second part.